And we are back. I am today with Lupita and Ruben. We are going to be having our special guest here in this episode, so stay tuned. God, I was born in church. I mean, why haven't I received it yet? I mean, I like a couple of times, but it's not really that serious. I mean, I was still born in church. I mean, my father, you know, he raised me in church. He's a good man. I'm a good man too. Sometimes I might just do stuff that I'm not supposed to, but it's really rare. I mean, God, come on. Like, I deserve you. I mean, you're like... God, like, you know, you forgive and stuff like that, like, we're good, we're friends, I'm really close to you, I mean, you know me since I was a baby, I was pretty much in Bible school the whole time. Oh, my Dios, sé que yo he hecho muchas cosas malas, Señor, en este mundo, Señor, no merezco tu perdón, mi Dios, sé que he pecado mucho, Señor, y no puedes perdonar a un hombre como yo, Señor. God, I'm so sleepy right now. I wish I could go to the bed right now with my pillows, with my teddy bear, with my comfy clothes. Oh God, please, can this prayer end already? I really want to go home. I want to give you so much because you gave me this food, this delicious food that I ate today. And it, it was so wonderful, like the pizza when it got in my mouth, my Lord. I want to give you thanks because the cheesy and the sauce, it was so delicious. But anyways, um, I want to give you thank you for um, the presents that you have given me right now. But the pizza was so, so delicious. My God, I believe in what the pastor told me, that you forgive our sins, my God. And I believe that you will forgive me for what I've sinned, and that I will be new, and that you will forgive me and take me into your heart. My God, please direct my path and my life, because I give my life to you, my God. We have a special guest today. As right? you can see. <laughs> How you doing? This uh, is uh, Jamil. I'm Jamil Iman and I approve this message. <laughs> Alright. So uh, what were some of the situations that you lived with your, in your house? Like how was it before? Well, um, it was it was pretty bad to be really honest with you. It was um, constantly, constantly fights. Because here's the thing, I'm I'm half Pakistani and I'm half Dominican. So already right there, that's a very, <laughs> that's a very complicated <laughs> mix, right? It's, it's very strange, right? But um, my dad, most of all, from being Pakistani, he had a very, very strong, you know, belief mm -hmm. in Islam. You know, he was Muslim. So, you know, they, they already, like, you know, shun a lot of, like, you know, culture that is outside of their own basically, right? So the whole point was my dad got into a huge problem. He didn't want us to to go to school like here. He didn't even he wasn't about to let us go to daycare or even school in general, you know, just so that we wouldn't contaminate ourselves with this culture. Um, also he at one point literally just took me and my and my sister um, back to Pakistan and left my mom here, you know, so he basically robbed us and You know, we stayed there for like a good two months. There were no intentions of going back and it, it made me feel it made me feel horrible Of course, you know, I would always um, uh, Like in my teenage years, especially when I started like, you know, getting more you know, like in my adolescence, mm -hmm. I was like immediately, okay, so what am I gonna be, Muslim or Christian or already or, or atheist? I don't know. You know, I was I was in kind of like that stage because all I saw that religion brought was just destruction in my house. Like you know, so I was 
I was very confused. Yeah. What were some things that you did in order to change all of that? <laughs> wow. Well, first thing, I started coming to the FJU, right? That was, you know, and that was in a church, by the way. So you can obviously tell that there was some confliction right there. If I explain to you everything, like how it went down, we're going to be here like all day. So the point is, is that, like, I started going to the church through the FJU, mm -hmm. right? And I would tell my dad, because he would ask, like, you know, he's a Muslim, you're going to church. Um, he would ask, like, oh, where are you going? Oh, you know, hang out with a couple of friends. <laughs> so, which is not wrong, which is not bad, because I was hanging out with a couple of friends. Yeah. I just didn't tell him, though. Hey. Don't get any ideas, you know? But the point is, is that I started going there first. I started learning you know, as I went on, it's not like, you know, I just learn about, you know, God and, and everything and just like one shot. No, like I had fun. I, I was really interested in it. I did a lot of, you know, activities within it. But then that's when um, I started taking things seriously. And I started understanding, you know, more about God, more and more and more or less. Right. And then until finally it came to a decision, you know. Because I went to like I went to a Muslim school also, so I, I I didn't even go to like you know public school until high school, right? But I grew up in that religion basically, and you know I saw kind of like both worlds, mm -hmm. both both beliefs, I guess you could say. And really, it was all just a bunch of words. I'm talking about both sides. As I was growing up, that's how I saw it. Just a bunch of words, a bunch of different doctrines. Oh, I believe in, in this God that's called Allah. I believe in this God that's called Jesus. I believe in so and so on and so forth. So, like, you know, I just stayed more and more confused. I'm like, why are people fighting over this nonsense, mm -hmm. right? But when I actually started coming to the FGU, you know, participating, um in all of these, you know, spiritual activities, uh, I started seeing changes in me. That's, that was the eye opener. That, I guess that's, that's what you could say will really like solidify my decision. How is your family now? How's my family now? Well. Do you get to fight? <laughs> from, <laughs> well, yeah, hey, they, 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 we, don't, we don't fight. We, right, so then, don't. How is your situation? How are you now dealing with it? Um, Oh, no, no, I just want to clarify. My family is good. It's, it's just a joke. My family is really... No, 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 honestly, like, there, there, were, there, were, there were points that I see now that I look at my relationship with my father, my mother, my sister, and how we are with each other, and it, it, there's just no way to explain it. There's, there's honestly no way. Because I, like, you, you know, you know what you live. I know what I live. I know what my house is like. I know how... Everybody was with, you, with each other, and there's just there's there's no way there, there's no there's no comparison. What advice do you have for those who may be going through something similar? The advice that I give to you, um, as a youth, really is you you need you need to trust you need to trust God. You know, you really need, and it's not even a, a religious thing. It's not. It's not something like you have to go to church every day or even just like, you know, Sunday and never miss or no, but like you really have to, you really have to kind of like be a little curious, you know, because that, that's really how it was with me. Like I, when I started taking things seriously with God, it's when I really hit like rock bottom in my family. I, I would come to the FJU, they, you know, I would still be hard headed. They would say, okay, you know, you can change your life. You can change, you know, your situation, etc., and everything. But it would come in one ear and it would come out the other. But when I really touched, like, that lowest point, I was like, you know, let me see if this works. Let me see if you exist, God. I was tired of asking myself, why am I here, you know, every night before I go to sleep? Like, why, you know, why do I suffer so much? And really... That's just it, you know, if, if you find yourself in that situation, you're in rock bottom, you really just, you, you smile to everybody, just like how I used to do, but inside you're dying, inside literally you just can't take it anymore. Um, you know, my advice to you is just, you know, find, 
find somebody, you know, in the FJU, be it the leader or anything like that, that can, you know, that can help you. And just start learning more about God and seeing how you can actually use your faith to change your situation. It's not going to happen overnight, but that's what I did and that's, you know, what I'm living in. And uh, where are you participating at? Where's your FJU at? Oh, it's in Brooklyn. Fourth Ave. <laughs> shout out to Pastor Carlos. Shout out to Pastor Luis. Um, shout out to all my, my FJU buddies. And what time do you have it over there? We have it at 3 o'clock on Saturdays. You want to give the address? Uh, 775 4th Avenue, uh, Brooklyn, New York. I don't know the zip code, but you can Google it <laughs> and you're going to find it. Yeah. So come through. We're going to be waiting for you. Yeah. And that's every Saturday, all right? We'll be right back. then this is definitely for, it, for you. Uh, the guy, with the main person, uh, goes missing. He has some sort of top secret information that the government and other people want. So he's gone and his wife and some FBI agent is trying to find him. So you think that you know what's going on, but you really don't. It keeps coming, it changes perspectives from the kidnapped person to the present to where Everyone is trying to find him, and you don't really know who's the bad guy, who's the good guy, and you don't really know how it's going to end. So it's very entertaining, and it's very, it's fast-paced, right? So it's not like you're bored at any moment. It's very, very interesting what's going on. There's government conspiracy. There's a lot of, um, a lot of personal agendas going on. So that makes this book really, really interesting. I highly recommend it. If you have read this book, if you have any comments, suggestions to make, leave them in the box below and we'll see you next week. So Lupita. That was interesting, wasn't it? That was so <laughs> interesting. Who knew? I didn't I, I mean I know Jamil for a very long time. Yeah. But I didn't know how complicated that was. <laughs> yeah, I mean you always know the second part of the story, you know, but now we know it. And you know it too. So yep, this that's it for now. Oh. Thanks for being here with us. With us. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They're Facebook, all below. Yeah, all Facebook, of those. They're all gonna be right here. Yeah. We and also have a phone number, right? They can text us. Yeah. Right, right here. Because. <laughs> <laughs> and every Saturday, join us in FJU. Uh, like he said, FJU, we do many different type of things, but we mostly focus on, you know, you being happy, you being a different youth, you taking different decisions instead of making the ones that you are taking right now. And many of us have seen the transformation in ourselves. You know, before we came to the youth group, we were some type of way, and today we're completely different. We're trying to, you know, send the message that we're here to help you. <laughs> there is absolutely nothing that's impossible <laughs> that you can't change. So join us. I am in Jamaica, which is 435 Edna Street, and that's every Saturday at 4 p.m. And I am located in 482 South Broadway, Yonkers, New York, 10 to one I do know my zip code, Jamil, in case you're watching this. <laughs> yeah, and throughout the United States, we're also, uh, there are many other locations. You can send us an email. Uh, we are here in New York, obviously. If you live in New York, there's a location in Queens, in Manhattan, Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Bronx. Westchester you can find County. us in that's, plenty that of places. That will be us. <laughs> yeah. So, that's it for today. See you guys next time.